So for this demonstration, we're using an Ancaneus approach. It's a direct posterior approach to the capitellum. So this is a left upper extremity. We've positioned it to recreate the lateral decubitus positioning of a patient. So the hand is towards the bottom of the screen, the shoulder is towards the top, and the patient's head would be to screen left. So for orientation, we have the olecranon, on, the lateral epicondyle and capitellum and radial head. The soft spot location for a soft spot portal, typically used for injections or arthroscopy, would be here. And then the medial epicondyle and ulnar nerve. The Ankeny splitting approach is critical for graft insertion for the capitellum because it allows for perpendicular approach to the articular surface of the capitellum. This is also a useful approach for fractures such as coronal shear fractures of the capitellum for the same reason. It allows for excellent vis visualization of the articular surface but also perpendicular approach to place fixation. The incision for the Ancaneus splitting approach is equidistant between the lateral epicondyle and the lateral border of the olecranon. As we flex the elbow, we can more clearly see the borders of the capitellum. Once the line is drawn, it's important to extend the elbow to make sure we have a linear incision. Once the capsulotomy is complete, we'll proceed with placing deep retractors so that we can flex the elbow to deliver the diseased portion of the capitellum into our operative field. A small homan that is curved will be placed first laterally. As we flex, we can begin to visualize the OCD. So now the elbow is hyperflexed, allowing the OCD to be fully visualized as well as perpendicular access to the articular surface. The whole retractor is placed around the lateral edge of the distal humerus. We can place a small self-retainer as well. Occasionally, additional exposure and access to the more medial portion of the trochlea is necessary depending upon the medial extent of the OCD. To provide additional access, the elbow and forearm can be supinated to cause the ulna to slightly subluxate at the level of the olecranon providing additional exposure. With our retractors in place and the elbow in the flex position, we have excellent exposure of the capitellar articular surface. We'll next begin with assessing the size of graft that is needed. This can also be estimated accurately from the preoperative MRI. First, a 10 millimeter sizer can be used, and it seems that this may be a bit undersized given the size of the lesion. Moving up to the 12 millimeter sizer, this seems to provide adequate coverage to span entirely the OCD to normal chondral borders. Based on this, we're gonna implant a 12 millimeter fresh osteochondral allograft. While holding the 12 millimeter alignment rod perfectly flush to the articular surface of the capitellum, my assistant will next insert the 2.4 millimeter guide pin. With the guide pin in place, we'll proceed with the recipient site preparation. Next, we'll ream the recipient site using the eight millimeter deep 12 millimeter diameter single use oats reamer. The guide pin can next be removed. We'll lavage the recipient site, removing the preparation reamings from the field. To improve the biology and aid in graft incorporation, it's helpful to use a small wire to drill the base of the recipient site. We can check the recipient site for any remaining bone debris or chondral flaps, just as shown here. After completing the recipient site preparation, we've measured and cut the graft to the appropriate length. We've lavaged the graft to remove any remaining cellular elements. And we used a small rongeur to bevel the leading edge of the bony portion of the graft to aid graft insertion. We will now proceed with implanting the graft. Once the graft is fully seated, we can take the elbow through a range of motion followed by lavage of the wound, capsular and ankyneous repair and skin closure.